In this video, we're going to take a look at creating dimensional constraints with the 2D sketch commands inside of Autodesk Inventor. Here I've begun with the creating dimensional constraints IPT found in our working files directory. So here I'll just activate sketch one by double clicking on it in my model tree. I'm going to go ahead and show my constraints at the bottom of the screen or by toggling with F8. You can see I already have some geometric constraints in control here. Now, in order to create fully constrained sketches, we cannot just get away with only having geometric rules. We also need dimensional rules to help control the magnitude of our sketch geometry. So right now, this sketch actually tells me that I need 11 dimensions. Now, as I start applying more dimensions to this or more geometric constraints, that number will go down. So this is found in the lower right corner of the screen. You can see it says 11 dimensions needed. And as we go through here, you'll start seeing that number decrease. But it doesn't mean you have to have 11 dimensions. Sometimes applying more geometric constraints will reduce that number as well. So let's begin by looking at our dimensional tools. We actually have two commands up here. One's called dimension. One's called automatic dimension. Now, anytime you see the word automatic as a software user, you should always be cautious. The automatic function that most softwares will create, you should always consider about 70 to 80 percent good enough. So generally, I don't trust automatic. I normally don't use it that much. It helps me out when I'm in a bind. I'll say that. But I'm going to go ahead and just throw these on there with this automatic dimensioning and show you what it does. So I'll go ahead and apply my automatic dimensioning. And as you look at this, what it's trying to do, does any of that make sense to you? You know, all these are kind of weird, wacky values with the exception of some of the diameters, right? So generally, I don't trust what the computer does for me. I would like to control my design intent on my own. So I'm going to go up here and choose Remove to get rid of those. So the only time I really use this automatic function here is if I'm in a pinch and I can't quite get that last dimension, this will at least show me where I need to try to apply it. So the more generally used command is actually called General Dimension. There's a shortcut D for it. You can also right click with your marking menu and choose general dimension from that radial. So here it is in the lower left area of that. So I'll go ahead and start general dimension. And this is a very, very dynamic command. So as we start placing this dimensional tool onto different entities, depending on what we click on, what we click on first and second, where we click on it, we will get different results. We'll also have different options available to us as well. As a very simple example, we'll start out here with these circles. So if I were to select this circle for a dimensional constraint, you can see as I pick it, it gives me a value. And if I click again, it'll place it and ask me for a value on this. So right now, it says edit dimension D11. Now, why is this D11? Well, when I place that automatic command, it actually tried to generate a bunch of D values. These are just placeholders for dimensions. Don't worry about this D11 right now. Just know that that's a system identifier for this dimension. But what I'm really curious about is the value. So since this is a parametric system, if I were to change the value of the dimension, it would force the geometry to change with it. This is not more reactive, this is more of a proactive tool. It's very dynamic to change your geometry for you. So instead of this being 0.5518 and having me go back and using like a, a scale or a properties palette or something like that to reduce the size, I can just come in here and adjust the value. So here I'll make it 0.375. I'll hit enter, and it automatically will resize it. And you'll also will notice that it automatically scaled my entire sketch geometry too. That's actually a neat trick about the software. Your first dimension you put on, as long as it's only the single dimension you have, it automatically will scale the rest of your geometry based on that adjustment. So if I come back up here and double click on it, that allows me to edit that value. I'll change that to 0.5, and it scales it back up a little bit for me. Now notice this 0.5 created a diametric value. As I'm still in the dimension command, you can tell that because it's highlighted up here, I'm going to go ahead and pick on this curve. Now when I go to place this, it's already showing about 0.5 as well. But instead of a diameter, this is showing a radius. By default, if you have a full circle, it will always pull diameter. If you have a partial circle or an arc, it's always going to pull radius first. If I would like to force it over to a diametric value, I need to right click. Go down here to Dimension Type and choose Diameter. Notice there's also an option for Arc Length. But here I'll choose Diameter. And I want my diameter of this to be 1. Down here on the end, I will choose Arc Length this time. 
I want the arc length of that to be 0.875. Now as I'm doing this, you're seeing my dimensions at the bottom going from 11 down to 8, so that number is reducing. You are also seeing the color of my geometry changing to reflect that I'm actually constraining it more in place now. I'm locking down magnitudes. Next, I'm going to come to this little line segment here and choose it. And by default, I get a vertical or a horizontal option, depending on where I put my cursor. If I would like this to be an aligned value, I can force it by, you guessed it, right-clicking and choosing an aligned value to get that. Now, instead of placing this, I'm going to hit Escape and start over. General dimension again. A neat trick with the aligned is if you were to go to select that element and then go back and click it again, it will automatically toggle it over to align. So I'm going to make this 0.313. There we go. Now that line segment is still a different color because I have not fully constrained how this line segment can be dimensioned and constrained. So if I come in here, I can actually pull on it. You can see my blue lines, which are a different color still have some flex to them. They still have the ability to adjust in their magnitude. So let's take care of that. I'm going to start my general dimension command again. I'm going to select this line element here and make that 1. Now I would like this to be the same magnitude as on the top. So again, we talked about we can use geometric constraints to do this as well. Let's watch my number 6 value down here, 6 dimensions needed, as I come in here and apply an equal constraint to this segment in this segment up here. You can see I no longer need to define this curvature, and I now have only five dimensions needed. So we can accomplish our goal of a fully constrained sketch with a combination of constraints and dimensions. You can't just do it one or the other. I'm going to start general dimension again, and this time choose my center point here, my center point down here, so we can do center point dimensions to get kind of an overall value. Here I'll do 2.25. I still have a radius value or a diameter value on this to control. Let me zoom into this. Instead of actually applying a control to the circle by itself, I would like to know the difference between these two. So here I'll click this circle, and instead of just placing it, I will click the other curvature. So now I can get a difference between those two curvatures. Here I'll choose 0.125. Let's take a look at this slot here now. This is one of our last guys to really control our value on. I'm going to go ahead and apply a dimension from the center of the file here to this dot here. That's going to be 0.75 away. I'm going to apply our radius value there. We'll do 0.0625. Now, the only thing I have left is to control the magnitude of some of these lines here. And this is a nice trick. You can always pull on something that's off color and see if it moves. So you can see that that's my dimensional control I still need. So in order to do this, I don't want to go center to center. I actually want to go from tangent to tangent. So I'll start my general dimension. And you might think, well, maybe I can just click on this curve here and click on this curve here. Well, when you do that, it gives you the center to center dimensions. I don't want that. I want tangent to tangent. So let me hit escape. I'll start dimension again. This time I will pick this curve again. But instead of just haphazardly clicking on this curve, I'm going to move my cursor around the curve. Now, notice that at my cursor, there's a couple of arrows that go back and forth with a line underneath them. Watch that glyph. As I move my cursor around here, that will change to show tangency instead. That's when I click. So I'll select that. Now I have an overall tangency value instead, and I want that to be 0.75 to control that. But this has been a look at creating, modifying, and deleting dimensional constraints inside of our sketches inside of Autodesk Inventor.